this will be a quick training video on the software that we are now using to fill out release of liabilities for vehicle lockouts as well as fire watch sheets. In the application tray on all the iPads should be this program called PDF Expert. It has taken the place of the previous program documents, which we used to use to read PDFs. PDF Expert is a little more feature rich and allows us to sign PDF documents. Uh, so that old program has gone away and been replaced by PDF Expert. Launch the program and it will take you into the documents screen where you will see we have four items. A folder called completed forms, which we'll see in a minute a folder called Downloads, and then two PDFs, one called Firewatch and one called Release of Liability. So far, these are the only two fillable forms that we use. So you get dispatched to a lockout. When you get on scene, bring the iPad with you, and what you're gonna do is launch PDF Expert, come into this Documents tab if you're not already there, and then just simply click on the Release of Liability form. This brings up the standard Release of Liability that we've already been using, except now it is fillable. At this point, if you want, you can hand the iPad to the person uh, who needs the vehicle unlocked. They can read through this. They'll click in here. They're going to fill out their name. John Smith has been locked out of his vehicle. Come on down. They type their name again. And now they're going to sign it saying they agree to everything in the release. They click in the signature box and a dialogue comes up with the choice of my signature or customer signature. We always want to choose, regardless of who's signing it, the customer signature because that will bring up the ability for us to sign it. So John Smith signs his name, clicks the done button, drops his signature in. We need today's date. Click in there, brings up a date chooser where we can just click on today, click the done button. Vehicle description, this is going to be a Chevy Tahoe. We need their license plate number, and again, we like to include the state on that. So Colorado, and he's going to be ABC-123. Driver's license number, again, capture the state of the driver's license he has, and then his driver's license number. Who is actually attempting to get into the vehicle? This is our personnel, so in this case, it's going to be me. The tool I used, I'm a fan of the Big Easy. And did I cause any damage? I've done a few of these things in my time, so no. No damage caused. Make sure you fill something in there so that if they come back and claim in the future that we did something to them, uh, we've definitely marked whether there was damage or not. And now, once we're all done and I've gained access into that vehicle, I'm going to mark whether I'm successful or unsuccessful. In this case, I was successful, and now I'm going to sign that. Again, I want to click on Customer Signature, which will bring up this signature pad. I sign my name. I click Done. There is the completed form. So now we got to get this back to myself so that when I get back to the station, I can attach this PDF to the ENFERS report in emergency reporting so that it follows that report wherever it goes. In the upper right corner, we see a bucket with kind of an up arrow in it. And when we click on that, it brings up an additional menu. And one of those options is send by email. So I'm going to email it to myself. I click on send by email, and now I have to choose a file format. My three options are document, flattened copy, and annotation summary. What we want in all cases is the middle option, flattened copy. If I send the top option, which is document, it's going to send a blank PDF with nothing filled in. The flattened copy is that blank PDF with all the information and the signature. So click flattened copy. Now it's going to say, who do I want to send that to? And in the email here, I can see that it's been filled out and the signatures are there. If that is blank, you very likely chosen the wrong copy, the wrong version, so make sure it's flattened. I'm going to send this to myself. Here I am as a recent. We'll click there. I click the send button. It's gone. So now it'll show up. It'll be in my email box when I get back at the station. The next thing we want to do before we exit out of this is save a copy of this thing to the iPad. So in case it gets lost in email or we've got to get a copy of it later on, we want to be able to have a local document on the iPad. So go back to that little up arrow button and click save a copy. 
Again, it's going to ask you original, flattened, or annotation summary. We want flattened. The name, I'm going to erase that and we want to save these by the date so they're easier to find. So today is the 18th. We want to use dashes, not the slash, because slashes don't work in file names. We'll put the year, and it asks me what folder I want to save that in. Well, we saw those two folders that were in the uh, documents area. I want to change it from documents, just by clicking on it, to completed forms. So whether it's a lockout waiver or a firewatch, we'll just save them all into the completed forms folder to keep things neat. I go back and I'll click the done button. It's now going to ask me do I want to save or discard changes to the original file. In this case I want to discard the changes to the original because I want that original to be fresh next time someone else needs to use it. So I'm going to say discard. It saves it. I can navigate back to the documents area and now if I go into completed forms we see the lockout waiver that I just completed. And if I need to send that to myself again, I can go back up and re-email it to myself. And I go back to the release of liability, and I've got a blank one so I can fill it out again. Let's say you accidentally save over that, or you get this iPad, you click on release of liability, and it's got someone else's information filled out. Not a big deal. We always keep a blank one available on the network to re-download. So at this home screen here, underneath documents, you see network. If you click on that, it'll take us out to our Dropbox where the masters are all saved. And you'll see one of the lists right there is the release of liability. If I click on that, it's going to download it automatically. There it is. Done. And where that put that is in the downloads folder. So, didn't replace that one there. It just downloaded a new copy into downloads. I want to move that back out into the documents section. Click and hold. I can drag it over on top of documents, and now I can just take that guy and drop it into the documents. Do I want to replace it? Yep. So now I've got that fresh copy saved there so we can fill it out again. Same thing with the Firewatch. If we go on a call where we've got a sprinkler system that is now being taken out of service because a pipe froze or a fire alarm system is not working anymore, and we need to put that building onto a Firewatch, this form is now available for them to fill out. The owner of the building needs to go through and read all of this and we'll have to explain to them what exactly a fire watch is. And this is typically something that will be done by a lieutenant, a captain, uh, or one of our battalion chiefs. And if you have any questions, contact one of the bureau members uh, and they can certainly help get involved with this. But if we have any specific requirements during a fire watch, we can fill that in here. We have the premise address, the building owner or representative's name, the name of the person who will be completing the fire watch, the golden fire officer, so that'll be your name here, the date at which this was filled out, and now you need the building owner signature. They'll click on this. Again, it'll be the customer signature button. They'll fill that out. And you're going to want to email two copies of this, or at least copy the email you send out. One is going to go to the building representative that you're dealing with. The other one is going to go to yourself, so you can attach this to that fire report in emergency reporting. And also save a copy of this with the date into that completed folder so that we can get back at it again. If you've got any questions, any suggestions, any items you think might be useful uh, for this program to use, as always, feel free to drop me a line and we'll include them uh, in the next update.